podcast. Happy Hello. Saturday. Happy Saturday to you too, my friend. How are you? And happy Saturday to all of our listeners. Yeah, all um, of we our know friends. you can't necessarily get to every single single in ISO with Kirsten names, um, but we're loving watching how many of you are engaging and, and listening and hopefully getting a little bit of joy in your day. <laughs> Yay! Yay for joy and hope. It's what we hope to it's what we want to bring to the world. Tell me about your um, morning, Kirst. We're recording. It's about 12. O- is it 12 o'clock now or is it later than that? Yeah, it's 12.30. There you go. What have you done this morning? I have played Monopoly with my children and trying to teach them how not to be like Kirsty. Uh, I One child in particular is very similar to me and is crying every single time their hotels get skipped over because of the dice or uh, has is having a hissy fit every time their bank balance goes down to next to nothing and then is elated when somebody does land on them and it just reminds me so much of me. <laughs> uh I there's you can ask my sister about how many times the monopoly board got flipped upside down in anger I was about to say that did you actually get through without a flipping (laughs) yes we did today we have today so far was it a game for all four of you or were you braving it with just the kids Oh, no, I was braving it. Simon was braving the shops and (laughs) getting food for us so I braved it with the kids by myself You'll be rewarded with a delicious Simon dinner tonight. I can almost guarantee it. I will be. Thank you for that beautiful reminder. What have you been <laughs> doing? Not much. I um I wasn't feeling very well yesterday, and so I went to bed and had fifteen hours sleep. Um, I still don't feel awesome today, so I plan on maybe even having a nana nap this afternoon. Um, so I haven't really done much. I've listened to a couple of podcasts. The kids are playing basketball outside as we speak. They've been playing a little bit of um, NBA 2K19. Yeah, it's been a cruisy, chill morning at the Ravel House. It's what Saturdays are for. That's what every day is for in ISO. <laughs> no. Today we're gonna Yes. <laughs> when you get when the kids go back to school, you're in school holidays at the moment, but when yes. they go back to school, it will not be every day. <laughs> no, that's probably true. There'll be a couple of hours of work and then a whole lot of hours of this. But today we're going to talk to you about decluttering your utensils while you're in ISO. Um, because that's a really easy place that you can clear some of the clutter and we're going to hit you up with some creative ideas of what you could do with the utensils since you can't necessarily get them to an op shop. Exactly. So our tips for getting rid of, de- well, for decluttering firstly, is to go through your utensil drawer and and it can take you like two, you can just use two minutes like we do in our declutter bingo, um, our micro declutter, or you can spend, you know, 15 minutes and go through the whole drawer. But it's just one or two drawers and it shouldn't take you too long to do it. So we give us some tips on how they can declutter this drawer, Amy. My favourite way of decluttering a utensil drawer is to get all the utensils um, from around the kitchen. So sometimes people have like the second drawer, but then they'll also have, <clears throat> excuse my croaky voice today, they'll also have like a, a, a receptacle next to the um, stove or they might have some hanging up on hooks like we do. Bring them all out onto the bench and I would encourage you to sort them like with like. So all the ladles together, all the wooden spoons together, all the egg flippers together. And so you can actually see what you have and then you can go through and declutter the excess or ones that maybe are burnt and melting or wooden spoons that are cracked and are full of germs and go through and get rid of any that um, you're not going to use going forward. Yeah. I often find multiple um, peelers in clients' homes and yet there's often one that we prefer over the other and so or one that we prefer over the other five so um yes go and talk to your family members because just because your preferred one is one doesn't mean that your husband or kids or partner don't prefer another one so just check with other people in your home too particularly if they are helping around the home helping in the kitchen but if they don't help in the kitchen then it's totally your choice what you can get rid of in your utensil drawer 
So lots of the op shops, in fact, I think all of the op shops around the world are closed at the moment. Um, so we thought it'd be fun to bring you some ideas of what you could do with these utensils, given that you don't need them in the kitchen anymore. So one of the things I was thinking is you could put some of them in your sandpit. So like a spaghetti, you know, the ones that have like the claws, the spaghetti scoop that has the hole in the middle. That would be really cool in a sandpit or as a bath toy. Um, and the same with something like a ladle would be great in the bath and equally great in the sandpit. Yeah, and if you've got young kids who are really into mud kitchens, then for this season of isolation, you could set up a mud kitchen as well. I know my kids, when they were younger, they loved getting out in the backyard and creating mud and mess and then we just hose them off so you could always have an outside kitchen for pretend imaginative play as well if you're getting rid of multiple wooden spoons or multiple egg flips you could set the kids up with like indoor balloon hockey or something like that so you could blow up a balloon so that it's not at full expansion so it's got a little bit of give in it and you could get the kids like back and forth, like you could set up um, a bit of a rally over a chair, over a kitchen table. Um, you could be really creative with allowing them to use the utensils inside as bats and hooks and slappers and a- all different types of things that they might like to do with a balloon. That is such a cool idea, Amy. <laughs> I love your creativity. <laughs> oh, we're just getting started. Have you got an idea for the pastry brushes that we're getting rid of? Uh, use them for painting. Yes, use them for painting outside even. Yeah, just get water and paint the fence. Perfect idea. What about if you've got um, lots of, you know how lots of people have like the bamboo skewers? I find every kitchen has like a half open packet of them because once in your life you made your own shish kebab and then every other time you've bought them. And so you've got this half open packet of bamboo sticks. What you could do is give your kids a packet and get them to split it between however many kids there are or work together on a project with like a, a roll of sticky tape and see how tall they can make a structure that will stand up. So you could go down like an engineering kind of physics perspective using up your bamboo skewers. It might actually be a great time to use all those utensils for one last time. So just get creative in your kitchen and recipes and actually use, you know, like you you, you bought the zester. So make a cake that use lemon zest or orange zest at this time and then let go of the utensil. Oh, I really like that idea. Oh, so many ideas, Kirsty. If you have any more ideas, friends, come into the Art of Decluttering community and share how you will declutter your utensil drawer or what you're going to do with the utensils that you have decluttered. Awesome. Now, Amy, what is your gratitude for this Saturday? My gratitude is eggs. I, um, we don't eat a lot of like hard boiled eggs in our house. Sometimes we'll go through a season where I'll boil up like a whole dozen and we'll eat them over the course of a few days. But this week I've just been amazed at the different ways we've been able to use eggs in our house. So we've had scrambled eggs, we've had egg bread, which is like French toast, we've baked biscuits and cakes. And I thought, you know what, the humble egg is being a real hero in a lot of Australian homes and probably homes around the world while in ISO. So my gratitude is for hens and eggs. (laughs) What about you? (laughs) That is so cool. We actually buy our eggs from uh, um, a local, it's Kellyville Farm Fresh, it's a local um, grocer and they actually their eggs haven't been laying a lot of eggs lately because of the drought so they or yeah so they actually don't have a lot of eggs so they're putting limitations on their eggs as well so we have been going through some eggs but we're being very careful because we love the eggs from that place and we know we can't get too many of them so that's just my story about eggs for the week um (laughs) sorry peeps (laughs) um what am I grateful for today I am grateful that I can empathize with my kid when they want to tip up the board and I am very grateful that I have been very restrained and not sending them to their bedroom (laughs) that I am trying to be appreciative so I'm grateful for myself and my patience today (laughs) 
Yes, I was going to say, I bet your kids are grateful for your experience and also your self-control in also not throwing the board over when you're over it. Oh, yes. There have been, um, yeah, uh, We I decided today that I'd open up the whole house. So I've opened up every window in the house, every door. So I think our neighbours can actually hear me yelling at my kids because it doesn't mean just because I've been patient doesn't mean I haven't lost it when when that child has been in hysterics because I'm never going to win. I'm losing. I've got so little property. And then they have ended up being the, you know, property magnet. And yeah, anyway, <laughs> all that to say, my, my neighbors have heard me um, being a cranky mum, but I have at least maintained my patience enough to not kill said child. <laughs> Well done. Kudos to you for not having killed a child. (laughs) Just a quick question for you. Yes. I want to know what are you really, really looking forward to doing once you're out of isolation? Oh, that's a good question because I haven't felt, I am not feeling cabin fevered yet. So I would have to get into my cabin fevered mind to think about what I'm looking mm. forward to. Actually, I think I'm I'm looking forward to um, I'm looking forward to being able to get back into clients' homes. Actually, that's what I'm actually looking forward to doing. What about you? Yeah, I was thinking that the same. That it's really like I'm really really missing being in our clients' homes, um, but I'm also missing play dates for the kids. Like I've just noticed how um social even though they're introverts how social they are they just want their one friend over or to go to their friend's house so I'm missing that that's going to be something we um do a lot more of once we're out of ISO yeah I love it that even your um introverted kids are uh showing signs of um wanting people around (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah desperate times hey (laughs) I ho- we hope we hope that today has been a good episode for you, that it's something helpful to take away from it. We'd love to hear what you're grateful for. Tomorrow's episode is going to be a good one. We're talking about meditation, soulful Sunday. Is that what you're calling it, Kirst? Yeah. So I'd, you know, take a leaf out of Oprah's book. Call it, Instead of soul sessions, we'll call it soulful Sunday. Excellent. So stay stay safe, stay home if you can, and uh, we'll be back in your ears tomorrow. Can't wait. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learned something awesome today, we'd love you to leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook so others can find our podcast too. Don't forget you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, artofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com slash the art of decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom.